Okay, I'm going to go through a lesson of the exponent laws. This is section 3.3. Um, hopefully what you've done is you've been to JensenMath.ca and you have completed the investigation, so you have a basic understanding of the exponent laws already. What I'll do is I'll quickly um, review what they are and then we'll do a few questions using each of the exponent laws. So the first exponent law that you should have discovered is the product rule. Okay? So what the product rule tells us is that when we're multiplying powers with the exact same base, in this example down here, we're multiplying two powers. They both have the exact same base. They both have a base of x. That's important that they both have the same base. Okay? So when we're multiplying powers with the same base, you keep the same base. Okay? Don't change the base at all. Keep it the same. And what you do is you add the exponents. Okay? So multiplying powers with the same base. Keep the base the same. It stays as x. And you add the exponents. So we get x to the a plus b. Okay, so that's the product rule. Quotient rule. When we're dividing powers with the same base, okay, so once again, both of these powers have the exact same base. They both have a base of x. Okay, and when we're dividing powers with the same base, what we do, we keep the same base, just like we did with the product rule, but this time, we subtract the exponents. Okay, so... If I have x to the a divided by x to the b, dividing powers of the same base, I keep the base the same, and I subtract the exponents. And the third rule we'll look at is the power of a power rule. So if I have a power of a power, I can write it as a single power by simply multiplying the exponents. Multiplying the exponents. So if I have x to the a to the power of b, so I have a power of a power, I can rewrite that by keeping the same base and multiplying the exponents together, x to the a times b. Okay? So I'll just quickly run through these three rules again. So I've got the product rule, multiplying powers to the same base, add the exponents. Quotient rule, dividing powers to the same base, subtract the exponents, and power of a power, keep the base the same, multiply the exponents. It's tempting that when you're, you're multiplying powers to the same base, you want to try and multiply the exponents together, but don't. You want to add them. And similarly with quotient rule, when you're dividing, it's tempting to want to divide the powers, but what you want to do is subtract the exponents. Okay? So let's go through applying each of these rules. First off, we'll apply the product rule. So I have 3 squared times 3 cubed. I could evaluate each of those independently and then multiply them together. But what I want to do to make, um, to make it easier is I want to write this as a single power before I evaluate it. Okay? So how I can do that, first thing you'll notice is I'm multiplying two powers that have the exact same base. They both have a base of 3, so I can use the product rule. The product rule is right here. It tells me that when you're multiplying powers of the same base, keep the base the same, add the exponents. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep the base as a 3, and I'm going to add the exponents. So it's 3 to the 2 plus 3, which is 3 to the 5. And I know that is 243. If you didn't know that that was 2, 243, what you can do, you can use your calculator, do 3 to the exponent of, use that little roof-looking button or that arrow-looking button there, 3 to the exponent of 5. And that tells you it's 243. If you don't have that button on your calculator, there's probably a button on your calculator that looks like this. It'll say y to the x. Use that one instead. Okay? So let's do the next question. I have 5 squared times 5 times 5 squared. I'm multiplying three powers that all have the exact same base. I can use the product rule to simplify it. What I do is I keep the base the same and I add the exponents. The other thing you have to know, if you don't see an exponent okay, on your base, there is an invisible 1 there. Okay? So this is actually 5 squared times 5 to the 1 times 5 squared. So keep the base the same, add the exponents, 2 plus 1 plus 2 is 5. <clears throat> and then evaluate 5 to the 5 gives you 3125. 3125. Okay, next question. So your base doesn't always have to be a variable. I mean, sorry, <laughs> your base doesn't always have to be a number. It can be a variable. Okay? So in this question, I have x squared times x to the 7. So my base is actually a variable, but that's fine. I can still use the exact same rule. I'm multiplying two powers that have the exact same base. All I have to do 
keep the base the same. The base is still an x. And then add the exponent. 2 plus 7 is 9. Okay? Another thing I should mention here is that if you don't see an operator between two variables, okay, you assume that, what you're, that the operation you're doing is multiplication. Okay? So I have x squared times x to the 7. And here I have a to the 4 times a to the 4 times a to the 5. I'm multiplying three powers to all have the exact same base. So I keep the base the same and add the exponents. 4 plus 4 plus 5. 4 plus 4 is 8, plus 5 is 13. So I have 8 to the 13. Next question. So in this case, I have a negative base. Okay? So what I have to do, that's fine, I can follow the same rules. Multiplying two powers have the exact same base. They both have a base of negative 2, so I keep the base the same. Make sure you include these brackets around the, the base um, if it's a negative base. Okay? That's very important. Now what I have to do, so I kept the base the same. I'm multiplying the powers, so add the exponents. 4 plus 3 is 7. Put that on your calculator. Make sure when you put that on your calculator, you include the brackets around your base. Okay. In this case, um, it won't matter so much, but because um, my exponent is an odd number with a negative base, I know my answer is going to be negative. Um, and you'll see here I get negative 128. If, however, you had um, an even exponent on a negative base, those brackets are very important. I'll just do a quick example of that right here. So let's say I had negative 2 to the 8. 8 is an even number. Let's put that in on our calculator exactly as we see it, negative 2 to the 8. Okay, I get positive 256. Whenever you have a negative base with an even exponent, you get a positive result. Let's say I forgot to put those brackets in on my calculator, and I just did negative 2 to the exponent of 8 without my brackets. What I get is, my calculator tells me it's negative 256. Why is that? Because negative 2 to the 8 in the brackets tells me that my base is the entire negative 2. Negative 2 is being multiplied by itself 8 times. Okay? However, if I just have negative 2 to the 8, my base is only the 2. So I'm just multiplying 2 by itself 8 times and leaving that negative out front. Okay, so make sure you include those brackets. That's very important. Okay, next question where we have a rational base. That's okay, we can follow the same rules. Okay, so I have a half to the 3 times a half to the 2. What I have to do is keep my base the same. So even though it's a fraction, that's fine, just keep it. A half, add the exponents. 3 plus 2 is 5. What I have to do now is I have to apply that exponent to the numerator and to the denominator. So that's actually equal to 1 to the 5 over 2 to the 5. Let's see if I can make this page bigger. I'll just write it beside it here. Okay, so... Okay, so I've got 1 to the 5 over 2 to the 5. So I applied that exponent to the numerator and to the denominator. Okay, so I'm going to simplify this now. 1 to the 5 is 1. Be careful, I'm not doing 1 times 5. I'm doing 1 to the exponent of 5. That means 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1, which is still 1. And then I have 2 to the 5. Okay, if you want, you can put that on your calculator. Make sure you're using the exponent button, and you would get 32. Okay? Whatever you do, don't misinterpret 2 to the exponent of 5 as 2 times 5. Okay? It's not 10. 2 to the exponent of 5 is actually 32. Okay? So it's multiply 2 by itself 5 times. Okay. Let's do the quotient rule now. So quotient rule tells us when we're dividing powers with the exact same base, you keep the base the same, subtract the exponents. So for this one, I have 8 to the 7 divided by 8 to the 5. I keep the base the same. Subtract the exponent. 7 minus 5 is 2. So I have 8 squared, which is 64. Okay? So 8 squared gives you 64. Next question. I have x to the 70 divided by x to the 40 divided by x to the 29. Okay? So what this is going to give me, it's a, it's a quotient rule because I'm dividing powers all the exact same base. I keep the base the same. 
Subtract the exponent. 70 minus 40 is 30. 30 minus 29 is 1. If the exponent is 1, you don't have to write the exponent. You can just leave it as x. Okay. Next one. I have 4 to the 7 divided by 4. I know there's an invisible 1 there. Divide by 4 to the 3. Quotient rule, because I'm dividing powers with the exact same base. Keep the base the same. Subtract the exponent. 7 minus 1 is 6. 6 minus 3 is 3. And that gives me 4 cubed is 64. Okay. Next one. I can, I have, uh, if it's written as a fraction, okay, you know that that actually means divided by, right? All fractions are actually um, division questions. So like a fraction of 2 thirds actually means 2 divided by 3. Okay. So I have x to the 7 divided by x to the 3. I have Dividing powers with the same base, keep the base the same, subtract the exponent. 7 minus 3 is 4. Next question, question 11. Dividing powers with the same base. Make sure I keep those brackets. Okay. I have negative 0 0.5 as my base. Kept the base the same, subtract the exponents. It's an exponent of 3. Put that on my calculator. I know that I have a negative base okay, with an odd exponent, I'm going to get a negative answer for sure. And then you can plug that in to check what that is. So you have negative 0 0.5. I remember to put that in brackets on my calculator to the exponent of 3. And I got negative 0 0.125. I'll try and make that decimal clear. Negative 0 0.125. Next one. So we've got um, some fractions in this one. What we're going to do, we're just going to follow the same rules. In this case, we actually have a product rule and a quotient rule. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simplify the numerator. I'm multiplying two powers of the same base. I know when I'm doing that. I keep the base the same, and I add the exponents. 3 plus 2 is 5. And on the bottom here, I still have 3 over 4 to the 5 as well. And when you're dividing anything by itself, okay, you always get an answer of 1. 3 to the 4 over 5 goes into 3 over 4 to the 5 exactly one time. And we'll look at a rule for that. Okay, let me simplify this one here. So I'm going to simplify the numerator. I have a to the 5 times a squared. Multiplying powers of the same base, you add the exponents. gives me a to the 7. On the bottom, a to the 6 times a to the 1 will give me a to the 7 as well. Let me, let me go ahead and evaluate this using the quotient rule. So I have a to the 7 divided by a to the 7. Dividing powers of the same base, you subtract the exponents. So I have a to the 7 minus 7. 7 minus 7 is 0. Okay? And I had just told you on the previous slide, whenever you divide anything by itself, you get an answer of 1. Therefore, anything to an exponent of 0 is equal to 1. Okay? So anytime you see an exponent of 0 on a number or a variable, you know that the answer is going to be 1. Okay? Let's apply the power of a power rule. So what I have here, I have 3 to the exponent of 2 to the exponent of 4. Power to power, I keep the base the same. I multiply the exponents. So I have 3 to the 8. 3 to the 8 gives me 65, 61. Number 15, so I have a negative base. I keep the base the same. I remember to put it in brackets. It's going to be important for this one. And then I multiply the exponents. 3 times 4 is 12. Now, I have a negative base with an even exponent. That means I'm definitely going to get a positive answer, as long as I remember to put the brackets in my calculator. Negative 2 to the exponent 12. I get 4,096. Number 16. I have a rational base again. That's OK. We just keep that base the same. And then we multiply the exponents. 2 times 2 is 4. Okay. Now what I have to do, I'm going to make some more room for this one, actually. Um, now what I have to do is apply that exponent to the numerator and to the denominator. So I have 2 to the exponent of 4 over 3 to the exponent of 4. What that gives me, 2 to the exponent of 4 gives me 16. You can type that on your calculator just to be sure. 2 to the exponent of 4 
gives me 16. And then I also, on the bottom range, do 3 to the exponent of 4. And that gives you 81. So I have 16 over 81. And that's the simplest form. Nothing else goes into 16. No other, no other factors other than 1 go into 16 and 81. So that's the simplest form. Now, I had one more question that I cut out of there to make my room. Let's do that one. So I have, um, in this case, in, uh, in my base, I have uh, a coefficient and two variables. What I have to remember is this exponent on the outside of the brackets has to be applied to everything on the inside of the brackets, the 3, the a, and the b to the 7. So I have to do 3 squared, which is 9. I have to do a squared, which is exactly what I just said, is a squared, and then b to the 7 squared, power over power. What we do is we multiply the exponents. So that gives me 7 times 2 is 14. And there we go. That's simplified. So common mistakes with this question is people tend to forget to apply that exponent on the outside to everything on the inside. Square the 3, the a, and the b to the 7. Okay, here's a quick summary of all the rules. Feel free to look that over. Um, product rule, base the same, add the exponents. Quotient rule, base the same, subtract the exponents. Power of power rule, keep base the same, multiply the exponents, and anything to the exponent of zero is one. So, uh, download the worksheet, and that's it.